Alright, so we are doing a video lesson for chapter 1 in the 7th grade material. This chapter covers ratios and proportional reasoning. It, uh, it's gonna, a lot of it's going to seem familiar. It's just like taking stuff to the next level. Uh, this board is not cooperating too much, or this format's going to make it seem a, a little bit awkward, so I'm going to have to erase it <laughs> before I move it up again. So uh, pause the video at the right time if you need to copy it down, because the stuff I'm writing is going to disappear as I move it up. So let's get going. We've got a whole chapter to go through. I'm going to go through it pretty quickly, talk pretty fast, so feel free to pause it, go back, watch it again, the whole thing, and just sections. Um, you can also get additional information uh, when I give you guys the workbooks. And this page right here will give, uh, most of the examples are even the same, will give you more examples and more help with that. So, let's get going here. I have to do that every single time. So, uh, lesson one is on unit rates. It's just like sixth grade. A unit rate means per one, per one, per one unit. Um, and uh, in seventh grade, they just take it kind of the next level where you're working with fractions and decimals. So this example here says uh, two boxes or two dollars for eight boxes. So you set it up like we did in the sixth grade material, two on the top, and set up like a, a, a proportion, right, and, um, or a rate, two dollars per s eight boxes. You divide the top and bottom by eight to get to one box on the bottom, and two dollars divided by eight is 25 cents. So just just ends up at being a decimal where you like might get stuck there before. So um, uh, you also might be asked to compare. Like okay, you go to one store, it's two dollars rate boxes there, um, and then you go to another store and it's uh, fifty cents. Fifty cents for three boxes. They love to do this to you to make you do some math that they don't think you know how to do. So don't let them fool you. Work the math and see which one's a better deal. So we have dollars per box. So the dollars is on top, boxes on the bottom. To get this to a unit rate, we're going to divide the top and bottom by three. And at fifty cents divided by three, it looks like it might be pretty yucky. Okay, oh good, I can write over here. So you just got to bust it out and three into fifty cents, just like you know how to do. 20, and then that's going to do 6, and then it's going to start repeating. Um, bring down a 0, it's going to start repeating, so it would be point zero point one six repeating, or since it's money, you can round that off to 17 cents, and then you could compare them and know that 50 cents for three boxes is a better deal than $2 for eight boxes. So those are unit rates. They could throw a fraction in there. It could be, you know, two-thirds of a dollar or for eight boxes. That'd be kind of weird because it's two-thirds, but maybe it'd be the other way around. Two dollars for two-thirds of a box. So you would just work it a little heavier duty. Two dollars for two-thirds of a box, and you would divide the top and bottom by two-thirty. Two-thirds. All right? That's lesson one. Pause it if you need to write that down because it's all going away. All right. Uh, lesson two in this chapter. Just move that down. Oh my gosh. Sorry. Lesson two in this chapter is, I'll try to get two on one, one screen, two lessons on one screen. It's called complex fractions. And we went over this a little bit during the actual year. Uh, complex fractions is when you have a fraction in the numerator, numerator, or the denominator, or both. Denom got to check the spelling denominator or both. So um, they, just, they look kind of weird because you got a fraction bar over a fraction. So this would be like one and one third over one fourth. Okay. And the way you work this out is the fraction bar is just like division. So you would turn this one and three fourths into a um, improper fraction. Four over three, right? Three times one equals 3 plus 1 equals 4 divided by uh, 1 fourth and then you're dividing fractions so the rule says to keep change flip or multiply by the reciprocal right? I just kept the four, th th four thirds changed the f division to multiplication flipped um, or did the reciprocal of the last fraction and then you multiply 16 and 3 and then it comes out to 5 and 1 third so complex fraction it's just a fraction in the numerator, a fraction in the denominator, or a fraction in both. You can, like I said up above, you can also have this as unit rates. So this could be like one and three, f one and one third of an hour. Uh, it, 
you can get through one fourth of your math homework, right? So how much is that um, as um, as a unit rate or figure it all work it all the way through? So that's complex fractions. And again, you can see more examples on page 18 in the workbook. Um, lesson three is on converting ratios, and this is pretty slick, actually. Um, I'm going to go ahead and move this up, so pause it if you don't have the lesson two stuff done. And go back here. All right, so you convert units of measurement through dimensional analysis. So th if they give you something in like miles per hour um, and they want you to convert it to feet per hour, this is how you would do it. So you set things up like a, a ratio and then you multiply times the unit you want to change it to. Best way to understand this is with an example. And I wish I'd given myself and you more room, but I didn't, so sorry. So we have 20 miles per hour and they're asking you to convert it to feet per hour, right? And they'll say, use a, a, a ratio to do this. You can't just do it any way you want. They want you to use it as a ratio. So the directions say, set it up like a ratio. So we have 20 miles per one hour. And you do need to put the units in there for this to work. And the directions say to multiply it times the unit we want to change it to. So we want to change it to feet per hour. Right? We want to change it to feet. Now hours are the same here and then you know hours over here too. I don't, don't want to underline it because it'll look like weird. But So the hours are the same. So we're going from miles to feet. So how many feet are in a mile? You can find that information on page 26 and you multiply it, it's 5,280 uh, 5, feet are in one mile. So I set up the 20 miles per hour here. 20, I'm going to re go over it so you see what I'm talking about. 20 miles, and I multiply it times the unit I want to move it to. It's 5,280 feet in one mile. Now what happens when you do this is you can cross divide the miles are gone, right? Then multiply straight across, and you will get 100 and uh, 105,600 feet. Because look, miles are gone. The only thing that's left here is feet. Boom. Okay. And then on the bottom, miles are gone. So one hour times one is one hour. Not hours, but I'll go ahead and put it there. So that's how you would convert from miles per hour to miles per feet. I'm oh, sorry, feet per hour. All right. So um, let's go ahead. Eh, there's hardly any room there. Uh, I'm going to change color so we don't get those things mixed up. If you need to write some more things on another note, you can. So let's say they ask you about 27 miles per hour. And they can do this for um, different thing. I'm just having to use miles per hour and miles per minute. So this time, we still want it in miles, but we're changing it from hours to minute. Set it up like a ratio. 27 miles in one hour. Multiply it times how many, uh, uh, what we want to change it to, which is minutes. Right? So we're going to keep... Uh, we're not going to do anything with the miles when we multiply it. We're going to do one hour. And you want to put this across diagonally from the unit it matches. See, there's hours here. So we put hours here so that we can cross divide it. And how many minutes are in an hour? 60 minutes. Sorry, the handwriting is not great. So now we have a problem that we can work. Cross divide. The hours are gone. Multiply straight across, 27 miles times 1 equals 27 miles. And on the bottom, 1 hour times 60 minutes equals 6, I'm sorry, it's not 1 hour, we crossed out the hour, so it's just 1 times 60 minutes equals 60 minutes. 
and then we need to get this down to a unit rate, right? Because we want to know about miles per minute. But this is the conversion. We have 27 miles per 60 minutes. But we want it per one minute. So we divide the top and the bottom by 60. I won't bore you by watching me do that. But when you multiply it out, it's 0.45 miles. So you can go 0.45 um, miles. All right. That should be minutes. In one minute. So these are equivalent. 27 miles per hour is the same as 0.45 miles per minute. Sorry, that should be a minute. All right. That, that one's kind of weird to get. So if you're not getting it, don't worry too much about it. Let me make sure I'm still recording. 10 minutes. My gosh, I'm sorry. I'm going to move along faster if I can. Lots to cover. All right. Um, okay, this one's pretty straightforward. Uh, constant rate of change. All you have to do is, uh, there's different ways to see if things are proportional or moving, uh, changing constantly. So uh, is the amount of money earned proportional to the number of hours uh, worked. So you'll see this word proportional and constant rate of change. So is it moving up at the same rate, basically? So what do we do to 1 to get it to be a 2 times 2? 18 times 2 is 36. So yes, it's proportional. And if you skip all the way out here, 1 times 5, or 1 times 1 is 5, 18 times 5 is 72. So this table is showing a proportional relationship. If you did that multiplying, or dividing, if the things were going down, and they didn't come out the same. Like if 1 times 1 is 5, and then 18 times 5 is not 72, then it wouldn't be proportional. And you would say no. But the question is, is the amount of money they earn proportional? Yes, it is. Okay, look on page 34 if you need more specific examples on that. Next thing is showing whether things are proportional uh, with, uh, with a graph. This one's easy for me to explain. Um, you basically have to have, we'll stick with the red color here. Uh, here's, here's my little graph. The origin, if you forgot, was, is um, zero, zero, right? So if it is a straight line and it's going through the origin, when you graph it, then yes, it's proportional. Yes, proportional. If it's not going through the origin, and it's not, or it's not straight, then it's not proportional. And this um, um, line could be as steep or as flat as you needed it to be. All right. Okay. Um, lesson six. Um, solving proportional relationships. Some of you guys seem to know this already because you wanted to do some of it in, earlier in the year. Um, it's called, also called cross multiplication. Um, so you use, use it to find out if things are proportional or solve for an unknown. So the situational, well, a little bit of background. The book explains it, and they want you to understand, start understanding things with variables, like to, to set up a rule. So they'll say, this is true. A over B is the same as, uh, or equals D and C. So we know that's true, and if that is true, they will they will tell you that this is true. A times D, going across here, A times D is going to be equal to B times C, going from the bottom here to that there. So they will tell you that. That's like your rule. So if that's true, then they give you uh, uh, some proportions and ask if this is true. Six. Now, the question will be, is this proportional? And, uh, of course, here you could just look at it and say 6 divided by 2 is 3, 8 divided by 2 is 4. But let's do it the, the way that they are suggesting. So let's go across. Top here, multiply times the bottom there. So 6 times 4. And bottom here to top here, 8 times 3. And if you multiply those out, if they are the same, then that thing is proportional. If you did that and they weren't proportional, then, then they... You, or they weren't the same, then they wouldn't be proportional. Uh, let me show you how to solve for a variable using that. And what will happen here, don't want to use the eraser, I want to use the marker, is they will say something like, um, so after two hours, the temperature's gone up um, seven degrees. So set it up like a ratio. So we've got temperature 
is 7. The time is 2 hours. Right? So in 2 hours, it's gone up 7 degrees. And um, how much time would it take for it to go up 13 degrees? So I'm putting that here on the top, because the top is where I'm putting the temperature. We know that it's 7 will go, uh, 7, it takes, uh, <laughs> it'll go up 7 degrees in 2 hours. The question is, how long will it take to go up 13 degrees? So we don't know that. So that's our unknown, that's our variable. Okay, right? Um, so use that cross multiplication thing. 7 going across is 7 times W equals 2 times 13, which is... 26, and then this should look familiar from chapter 7, I think it was in 6th grade. Solving for uh, W, W equals 3.7. Okay, so it will take 3.7 hours for it to go up 13 degrees. That's how you would answer that. This is called solving proportional relationships. Uh, they're solving for a variable using proportional relationships. Alright, hang with me. Almost done. How do I get the volume off? Oh, there it is. All right. So constant rate of change. Um, this is kind of asking the same thing. Are these things proportional? Are they going up the same same rate? Um, and then uh, they will ask for the constant rate of change in this. So um, we've got a situation where we're washing cars. We've washed five cars, we've got $40, 10 cars, or, yeah, 10 cars, $80, 15 cars, 120, etc. And what they're at, they will ask for is what is the constant rate of change? So, you look at one side, how much is it going up? It's going up by $5. Okay. You look at the other side, it's going up, and it could be going down too, these could be negative, it's going up by $40. So, um, uh, I'm going to do this over here on this side. So, we've taken the fact that it's going up by $40. Okay. And, um, and then it's going up for every five. For every five. You get $40 for every car, five cars you, you, you wash. Sorry. I'm thinking about two different things. Simplify that to this, and it, you can make $8.00 per one car is what it comes out to. That is the constant rate of change. Okay. So related to the next one too is what I was looking at. And you might be wondering uh, why I put the 40 on top. You will find out in the next thing. This graph should represent this, but it doesn't. It's uh, uh, 2 right here should, um, or, or let's go to 40. Four, five, 5 here should be up here at 40. So this line is not right on this graph, but I will refer to it for something else in just a, just a moment. So um, let me move this down one more time and slope. Slope, slope, slope. Sorry, you have to watch me do all that. So um, slope means like how, how steep is this line going up, right? A line on a graph. And the way you figure that out calculating is the vertical change per horizontal change. So uh, also you'll hear this as rise over run. That's what you need to know, rise over run. That will help you remember what number goes on the back. So think of it like a stairs, you know, how, how, um, how, how much further up is it going for over. Right, rise, rise, overrun. You can have some stairs that have a really high rise. They go up like that and only have a little bit of a run. That would be a pretty. Oh, it should be should be equivalent. It should be going up the same amount. But that's pretty darn steep, right? You could also have some stairs that have a short rise and a long run. Short rise, long run. Short rise, long run. Okay. So that's what that the slope is telling you. So how do you do that? So rise over run because the rise on the graph is the y-axis, right? This is how far up or down it's going. We put the y on the top. Rise over run. And x is the horizontal axis, so that goes on the bottom. That was this vertical change per horizontal change. 
So in the example up above, it was going up forty dollars. Up going forty, right? Because we made forty for every five cars we washed. Right? Going up forty for every five. It was going to the uh, horizontally. Simplify that, and then you would say the slope equals eight. And again, that line up there is not accurate, but if it was, you could see that for every one it went over, it should be going up eight. It's not quite right. Um, so that slope, rise over run, tells how steep the lies steep the line is. You can also end up, let me do another little one over here, um, with a fraction at the end, where it doesn't come out even. So let's have another situation where the rise of something is 12. It's going up every 12 for every 9 that it's going over. And if you simplify that, you could get it down to a decimal. But what they want you to do with slope is leave it like this. So we divided the top and bottom by 3. The, you would say the slope is 4 over 3. And you would leave it like that. That would be your answer. Don't, don't, don't convert it into a mixed number. Oakley doakley. Um, we will again go over all this in class. So just get the information down and get it in your head uh, slightly. And we will practice it in class and practice it on Alex. Sorry that was so long. Oh my god, 21 minutes. But it was a lot of good information. Break it into two parts. Bye-bye. Um,